Hey guys, it's been a minute. So recently I've been doing some experimenting with um, the the hot glue method of making wigs, which I'm sure all of you, it's, it's old news by now, you know, but I've only just gotten around to it. Actually, funny story. Wait, that is not a funny story. It's actually really boring and not interesting at all. So let's skip that and get right into the part that you probably want to see. So even though this project started with yarn and um, trying to figure out what I could do to make a, a yarn wig. What am I trying to say right now? What, where is my brain? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what could I do ever? Uh, just trying to, you know, manipulate hot glue and yarn because those are definitely, I mean, as much as I love hot glue and just gluing stuff to other stuff, I'm actually not that talented, that precise of a hot, hot gluer. What? No, it's like, it's like, it's like this. Well, your, what does your thumb even do? I guess it's like this. Huh? So I started with uh, this yarn that is a an alpaca and acrylic blend. So excuse this, this is Citrus's very original head, which most of you have probably not ever seen before, and it's so old and from when I was brand new to this hobby, so it's all stained and grody um, and beautiful and amazing. So here's where, where we're at initially. Um, with, you know what, I'm not going to try and smooth it down because this is what happens with yarn, especially when you cut it. Uh, but we'll get back to the, the pros and cons of this hot glue method and the uh, and using yarn as a medium. I actually have a lot to say, so get ready. I've got tips and tricks. So then we have this one, which is actually so much freaking softer. So this is, um, weirdly enough, this is 100% acrylic. These are the insides of these wig caps. So you can see um, this one was on a smaller head initially and it doesn't have much shape to keep. It pretty much lays flat, but it is nice and flexible. This one also pretty flexible and definitely has the shape of the head cap it was made on. The next thing I tried was actually uh, mod acrylic fiber, cankalon fiber in two different textures. I did kind of the um, regular texture that you would find in braiding hair, which is a little bit kinkier. And then um, something that you would see more in like a wig or a cheap wig. So I started with this one. This one is the kind of kinkier fiber, so I did end up straightening it out. Just initially, right off the bat, I definitely have to say that the mod acrylic fiber was so much more fun to work with than the yarn. I know that a lot of people aren't as into um, what you would call like synthetic fiber. This was a lot of fun and super easy, and you can definitely see in the inside of this wig cap, it has already shifted a little bit over here, but for the most part, this is pretty sturdy and it's super flexible, so that's good stuff, in my opinion, at least, I don't know. And then here is one uh, that was in more of like a cheapy wig kind of fiber. And also, yes, look at that. That's like a freaking perfect circle right there. It's, it's just beautiful. And the other wonderful thing about synthetic fiber, it's like you put it in a style and you shake it around and it's still in that style. Finally, I also tried to do this method, use this method with um, alpaca fiber. So this, once again, this is made from fiber that is like not the prettiest, and I really did a lot of experimenting more than styling, trying to, to, to make it beautiful. So here we have this. This is alpaca fiber. This is where I'm going to like pause and actually talk about these different methods. Alpacas are so soft. So what I really loved about the hot glue method is that it's definitely a lot faster. Making a hot glue wig cap takes like 20 minutes or less versus uh, when I'm using fabric and Mod Podge that takes quite a long time because I'm waiting for stuff to dry and in making sure you know it dries overnight and all this stuff that you got to do. It's also really quick to apply the hair. You can get a product pretty easily. The other thing I did with this in particular that I really enjoyed was that this hair was actually just because this was all like scrap fiber. So this was glued onto the wig cap and after it was glued onto the wig cap 
then I dyed it with um, human hair dye. Because obviously if I tried to put this in boiling water, the wig cap would melt and it would just be a big sticky, goopy, gross mess. So I did enjoy the process and I had a lot of fun with it. However, my problem with all of these, except for maybe the mod acrylic cancalon fibers that I used, my problem with all of these is um, this, this here. Hot glue to make a wig cap that doesn't like fall apart when you take it off, um, it has to be thick. I think it's fine the longer the hair is, the less you notice this, but when the hair is short, it just, it doesn't really give much more of the illusion of natural hair than, say, the synthetic fiber does. Now, actually, funnily enough, I could use less glue on the synthetic fiber wigs because the synthetic fiber, obviously, plastic melts with heat, so everything just laid really nice and flat the whole time, whereas with the fibers, and there's all these little tiny bits and they're floating away, I was trying to just catch them all before they all were gone, because it's really hard to fix your mistakes with hot glue. It's hard to like go back because the glue is melting the previous glue, and you don't want to melt the shape of the wig cap. Blah. So it's hard to fix your mistakes, and it's hard to, when you're working with a more uh, natural fiber, or an actual natural fiber, it's hard to not make the wig cap super thick. The other thing that surprised me was that I thought it would be really easy to fix my mistakes in making the actual wig cap itself, but what actually happens is that if you don't make it in a way that it peels off easily, it is hard. It is difficult to go back and fix those mistakes because, like I said, the glue is melting the glue next to it, so it has to constantly be on your doll's head to make it not totally warped and, um, this one, I definitely did not know that when I was making this one, so it's uh, it's not wonderful. It's not a great fit. Definitely needs like some Velcro or something because it definitely got warped. And then I'm just not a fan of how like thick this is and how I don't know how well that's translated on camera, but there's there's a good like quarter of an inch that I can actually push this down and it will rest against his forehead and that's just too much. And then there's all these bumps, there's these huge bumps of glue from gluing on the fiber and because this is really uh, thin, the fiber's thin, it's actually pretty easy in my opinion to see all of the mistakes that I made. Once again, final time I'm saying this, not made to be super gorgeous, just made to see how it worked. And like I said, I had a lot of fun, but I'm, I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say. I know a lot of you have been using the, the hot glue method to make wigs rather than Mod Podge because it is a lot faster. And in some ways it's easier, but for me, I'm, I'm like a precision detail oriented kind of person.